Hey, I'm Barry Frame. I'm one of the sim production lecturers here at Fife College and welcome back to another Pro Tools Micro Lecture. In this lecture we're going to be looking at the I.O. settings, the inputs and outputs and also the playback engine in your Pro Tools system. Now this basically relates to how we get audio into Pro Tools and also how we can hear that audio back out again. So we'll have a little look. Okay, so here I've got my Pro Tools uh, session here. Um, as you can see, it's empty just now. Um, now, one of the first things to check, okay, if you have got your Pro Tools session open and you've got a bit of audio, uh, you hit spacebar or you hit play up at the transport uh, section and you don't hear any audio. These next steps will help you try and resolve that, okay, before asking a lecture. We like we like you to try and figure these things out um, by using the resources available because you're not always going to have someone there with you. So get a really good understanding of where and how you can fix these things as extremely important and as very desirable in the workplace. So the very first place that you look you have to make sure that you've got the correct playback engine, okay? Now, your playback engine is usually mapped, uh, or, or usually is your interface, your audio interface that you're using. In my case, I am using an Avid Fast Track Duo interface just now. So, where you'll find the playback engine is if you go to Setup, and the second one down, Playback Engine. We select that, and it gives us the Playback Engine dialog box. Now, we have got a couple of things in here, um, the buffer size, etc. Et we will be going into this in more detail in a future um, lecture. Just now, we just want your, your Playback system to be uh, enabled. So, right away, I'm seeing an issue. The playback engine is set as built-in output. Now, I just mentioned uh, two seconds ago that I'm using my Fast Track Duo interface. So if I select, and it's plugged in, so if I select here, there is that option there. I select that. Now, we get this message saying, select this playback engine will automatically save and close your session. The session will be reopened when you are done changing settings. Are you sure you want to proceed? The answer here is yes. Now what's going to happen here, the minute I click yes, my session's going to close, but it will reopen again. So we hit yes, and then we hit OK on the playback engine dialog box, and hopefully, there we go. So now, if I go back up to setup, and I go to playback engine, Avid Fast Track Duo is now selected. Okie doke. Um, for this next bit, we're going to talk about the I.O., which again is in the setup menu under I.O., which stands for obviously Inputs and Outputs. So the I.O. setup dialog box, okay, this tells us what inputs we have going into Pro Tools and what outputs are available for us going out of the way. Now, as I said, I'm just using a little fast track duo. Uh, the word duo there obviously indicates that it's a two-channel uh, interface. So if I go along to the input tab, you'll see I've got two inputs available. Analog 1 and Analog 2, so that's fine. My output is exactly the same. I've got two outputs available, output 1 and output 2, so it's a stereo interface. In the bus section, this lets me see all the internal buses that Pro Tools can offer. Now. I can't remember off the top of my head how many buses you can get, but it's way in the hundreds. Uh, and again, there will be a, a future micro lecture on uh, internal busing and how we can move one track to another track, etc. But again, this is where we can find all these buses. Now, something to note here is, I'm just going to cancel this box now. If I create a new track, um, sorry, so track, new and we'll just create a mono track because I've got a, a single microphone plugged in. I press create and remember command equals takes you to your mix window. On the track here that I've just created 
I've got an input section and I've got an output section. Now, we can select exactly what input device do we want, where do we want our input source coming from. Now, by default, it should always come up with the first available one, okay? So in my case, input one of my Avid uh, Fast Track Duo is there. So if I click on this, I go to interface, and one, as you can see, is ticked there. Great. Now, the bottom one is greyed out. This is a common, common problem, especially when moving one session um, to another session, maybe on another computer, with different I.O. settings. If I click this, and I go to Output, now we can see built-in Output 1 and 2, and it's trying to send it out 1 and 2, but it says the path is not available. So, if it's ever greyed out here, and it's not giving you the correct option, this is the steps to take. You go up to Setup, you go into your I.O. options, and we go to Bus. Now, there is the built-in output, okay, so that's been ticked. We go along here, and in the I.O. setup, we've got a Mapping to Output se uh, section here. This allows us to take any one of these outputs and map them to another output. So, I've got here, this is getting mapped to built-in output 1-2, uh, path not available. If I click that, output 1 and 2 stereo, instead of built-in, I'm looking for output 1 and 2, I select that, that looks okay, I then come down to my right, click OK, and as you can see, that is no longer greyed out. And if I select here, go to output, yep, there we go. It's now mapped to output 1 and 2. Now, if I hit the record and able, you should be able to hear me. Um, I'm just going to do that because it sounds very weird in my ears. Now, that tells me that the... That tells me that the microphone is working. It's going into the track, and because I can hear... It's telling me it's also coming out that same track. Now, something else to note, um, especially in the I.O. Uh, when you're working in the, in the studios at Fife, we've got Control Room 1, I've got Control Room 2, um, and also a few edit suites. Sometimes, if someone else has been in, it won't be as tidy as this, okay? So, what you're going to have to do is import settings, okay? So, what um, Graham has done, Graham has set up a template um, in every single studio, and all we can do, we can recall those settings, these I.O. settings. So if I go down to import settings, it automatically takes me to the I.O. folder, and what you're looking for is control room, what, control room one or control room two, template okay so I'm in control one control room one I would just click that and I would hit open and that would remap everything for me there we go it's down there once that's once you've in, uh, opened up those settings then you should be able to start mapping out um, exactly what it is you're wanting to do with your session. So, I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, as always, you can email me, barryframe at fife.ac.uk, or again, just speak to one of the guys uh, in sound production with any questions. Uh, we also value your feedback as well, so please, any feedback that you've got, just let us know. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.